Hey, listen, today I am saying to you, there is a spirit of shrinking back that is coming on people so intensely and so strong, and I find myself getting angry about it. So I am glad to see you on here with me today. I'm Nancy McCrady. If this is your first time to be on a live with me, it is great to meet you. Check everything out at nancymccrady.com. But here is what I'm saying to you. Years ago, God said to me there would be three major temptations that would come against the sons of God. Number one, they would trust in their own goodness instead of his goodness. Number two is that they would prefer to stand alone. This is what that temptation would come, is to say to them, just stand alone. You're blessed. You're highly favored. Don't go into the ground, okay, and die to the form that you're in, right, so that you can come up and be a producer. The temptation is just stay on your own, just stand alone. But the one I want to address today, the one I want to out today, the one I want to expose today is number three, is the spirit of shrinking back. This is a major temptation that is coming against the sons of God today. The temptation to shrink back, to literally have a atmospheric fear come upon you. I want to say to you that it is not, hey everybody, it is not an emotion. It is a spirit. Years ago when I was in Kenya, I had a deep experience with this thing. I have never forgotten it. See this crazy glint in my eye? That'll tell you. I have not forgotten it. And when God gives you the privilege of encountering something and then walking away from it, right, then you know that you've just received an education that only comes when you walk with God. I want to say to you that what happened was uh, I was uh, on an assignment. I think it was my first time on foreign soil, preaching with an interpreter, doing all of these things. And, and so I was... Uh, preaching that day, living my assignment, moving forward with God, going into nations, all right? I, of course, I wanted to be there. Hey, everybody. I wanted to be there. But let me tell you what. That night, I had a panic come on me like I have never had. It ran through the veins. I can remember it like running. I could feel it running through the veins of my arms, this unbelievable panic and fear and anxiety. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And I wrestled in the bathroom by myself. I was sharing a room with someone, but I wrestled in that bathroom by myself. And I thought, what is going on? And all I could hear was, I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go home. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. I want to be here. What is going on? Which is a very good question to ask. I'm telling you that thing was, it was an unbelievable atmosphere that was so real, so tangible. I walked out of that bathroom. My friend said, are you sick? I said, no, it's a demon. Okay. And I'm telling you, we warred against that and it, it was done. Uh, and listen, I'm not talking about, I'm not um, high-fiving ourselves for, you know, we warred and broke. I'm telling you, we were dependent upon God. We, we prayed and we, we followed what God told us to do. And I'm telling you, it broke its back. And we went on and finished out uh, what we were there to do. But when I came home from Kenya, God told me this. Three major temptations would come against the sons of God to trust in their own goodness, to stand alone, and to shrink back in a fawning fear. I'm talking about, I can get up on a platform and act like I'm all that, but when I get by myself, that thing literally throws me around like a rag doll. And what happens is, is that the enemy wants to get you to start submitting to that thing more and more and more. So I make a decision based upon that fear. Now listen to me carefully. I learned years ago that when the enemy gets bored, tempting you with sin, he will entertain himself by terrorizing you. When he gets bored with tempting you, he entertains himself by terrorizing you. So you may be finished with open, blatant sin, 
But oftentimes the next levels of maturity is where we're about to get underneath the skin and we've got to begin to face the things that terrorize us, the things that scare us, uh, you know, whether that's, you know, loss or sickness or whatever it may be, loss of friends, loss of family, what's going to happen, loss of finances, all that. Listen, whatever it is that scares the living hell out of you, okay, hell is going to be tapping on it. And God wants to expose it to you so that you can make a decision. Because it requires, my friends, when you're going to mature, God walks you up to decisions. He exposes things. He shows you what is what. And then he says, choose me. He will not make you. All right. This is not just a matter of will power. This is a matter of I set my will towards his power. There's a huge, huge difference. And I want to say to you that this is a time in real-time engagement, real-time engagement. If that fear, that shrinking back spirit is trying to come on you, you have to do what Hebrews 10, right at the very end of Hebrews 10, starting at about verse uh, 32, okay, where it talks about we are not of those who shrink back. We are those who step forward in fearless confidence. Now listen to me carefully. The only place you can get that fearless confidence because God has been telling me he is about to baptize his people in confidence. A confidence in him and a confidence in the new heart that he has given you and the new spirit that he has put within you. The only place that you can have fearless confidence is in the abiding in the very life of Christ himself within you. This is not human confidence. This is not human bravado, human hype. Everything human has its limits and it is coming to an end. And listen, I'm telling you, we need this in the slow fire, the slow burn of discipleship and the education of the sons of God. We've got to tap in to the fearless confidence of Jesus, the one who could look death in the face and not flinch. I don't have that okay, all by myself. And what can happen is, is that when you've come through a lot of things in your life, you could be under the illusion that you're all that in a bag of chips. And you could be under the illusion that nothing scares me. Friends, you have just about almost required God to have to reveal to you what is about to scare you. All right? Because if you keep thinking that you're not afraid of anything, I'm not going to be afraid. Listen to me carefully. God is going to reveal to you that which scares the living hell out of you. And when it comes, it's an atmospheric shift that begins to happen. But it is the very courage of Jesus himself that's within you. And when you choose it, you may still, you may still feel afraid. But I'm here to tell you, this isn't an emotion. And the word says in Romans 6, 16, it says that whomever you obey, you make yourself a slave to. God has set you free. Okay, so welcome everybody. I'm glad to see you. All right, but listen to me carefully. God says, whoever you obey as a free man, you are free. God has set you free. Now, as you mature, it's going to be decisions you make out of your freedom. And oftentimes you have to uh, step forward and you have to keep making decisions to stay on that path that God put you on, okay? Like when I was in Kenya and this thing came on me and I could hear in my head all throughout me, like, I need to get home, I need to get home, I need to get home. I was like, I don't want to, no, what? Right? Because it wants you to run to former places of security and comfort and this and that. No, you run into him. And I had to say, I had to make a decision. And I made that decision out of, listen, <laughs> listen, I didn't even barely know my name. Making that decision was just like all I knew is that I know this is not of God. And God, lead me. Just, I'm willing to stay. I'm willing to face every fear. What are you doing? You know, and he began to release Okay, life within. Because there comes a point where you got to decide, I am sick and tired of this thing scaring me so bad. 
And whatever it is, listen to me carefully, whatever it is that scares you, you might just have to make a decision and say, even if that happens, I will go with you, God. Do you understand? Our deliverance is half-baked when we say to ourselves, oh, I'm sure God would never let that happen. My friends, I don't know everything that might be allowed in Right? I had to face this. And you have to face. What is it? Because it will forever have control over you. Okay? If you don't settle it by the cross of Jesus Christ, by the faith of Christ within you. Okay? And I'm talking about in the moments when you feel least powerful. Okay? I'm not talking about when you're all up on your mountain and you feel all, you know, whatever, powerful. I'm telling you, when this thing is talking to you, and you need to know it's a thing. It's not an emotion that you're trying to get rid of. And when this spirit of shrinking back, this unbelievable fire-breathing thing, which is really like, it's really nothing, but boy, does it feed on fear. And there comes a point where you have to say, even if, even if that is in my future, I go with my Father. Let me tell you, because the whole point of all the fear of everything is to get you to untether yourself, to get you to separate yourself from the Father. That's what it's about. It's not about what's scaring you. It's about getting you. Because see, now you're free, and if you are freely choosing to walk with the Father, the enemy is trying to get you to decide to give up. That's the same thing he had to do with Adam and Eve. He, he only has about three tricks. But boy, they keep working on, they keep working, okay? But they never worked on Jesus. This is Jesus, the one who looked death in the face and did not flinch and continued on. He gathered up his courage, it tells us in Luke 9, 51. Guess whose courage you share in? His. What you're finding is you have no human courage. It's over. So be glad for that revelation. Like, I don't have any courage. I'm over here, you know, in the corner about to freak myself out, right? Now, don't forget that. That's all you got all by yourself. That's it. God's showing you when you get to the end of human courage, there's nothing there. And then you say, Father, now I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw, Father, from the courage of Jesus inside of me. Because if Jesus had to gather up his courage to finish his journey, how many of you know, so are we. To finish. Do you want to be a finisher? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It says that he gathered up his courage in Luke 9, 51 and 52 in the Message Bible. He gathered up his courage and steeled himself for the journey to Jerusalem, the journey to the cross. S-T-E-E-L, steeled. Hmm? You know what that means? It means to mentally prepare. No more fantasies. No more bumper pads around the crib. No more telling myself lies to self-protect. I've got to mentally get prepared for what really lies ahead. That's why God is allowing your fears to be exposed in this moment. Thank him for it and say, Father, I step into my life, which is your life that you have shared with me. It's my life. I step into it. And there and there alone can you draw from the well of your salvation with great joy. Isaiah 12, 3. You got to put a demand upon that well of life that is within you. It's all we've got, my friends, but boy, <laughs> when you have that, you have him, you have everything, but it's getting real. This is where it's getting real because it doesn't get developed any other way. There are decisions that must be made because this unholy force, okay, that comes subtly and tries to whisper to you, it wants you to yield yourself more and more and more to it, and then you become its slave. That's what Romans 6.16 says. You may be born again, but you yourself, Galatians 5.1 says, you have now put yourself back in a yoke of slavery as a free person. So today I am encouraging you. 
Step forward in fearless confidence. Jesus gave you his. You don't have to come up with it yourself. You don't have to be ashamed that you have no courage. Say it loud and with a smile. I have no courage of my own. And therefore, I now know that it has always been God's plan that I share in his courage, in his faith, in his trust in the Father. So I want to read this to you out of the Message Bible before I close out. Because my friends, God said this thing was coming against us in mass. And let me tell you, he meant exactly what he said to me all those years ago. And I'm watching it happen. But my, my anger is riled because I am jealous for the Father that no one that comes under my influence, that not one would be lost, not one son would be taken away from the Father because they begin to be outwitted by the shrinking back demon, the shrinking back spirit. It says, remember those early days after you first saw the light. Those were the hard times, kicked around in public, targets of every kind of abuse. Some days it was you, other days your friends. If some friends went to prison, you stuck by them. If some enemies broke in and seized your goods, you let them go with a smile, knowing that they could not touch your real treasure. Where is your real treasure, my friends? Nothing they did bothered you. Nothing set you back. Listen carefully. So don't throw it all away now that the time is upon us to go forward. You were sure of yourselves then. It's still a sure thing. But you need to stick it out. Staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the promised completion. It won't be long now. He's on the way. He'll show up most any minute. Listen to me carefully, my friends. The God who was, the God who is, and the God who is about to arrive. But anyone, anyone who is right with me thrives on loyal trust. Guess where that comes from? Loyal trust comes from Jesus. You are abiding and sharing in the trust that Jesus had in the Father, not your human trust. Because if it's coming to an end and you're finding you can't trust him, good. Now step over into the very faith and loyal trust that Jesus has in the Father. He has shared it with you. It's your inheritance as a son. It says, but we're not quitters who lose out. Oh no, we'll stay with it and survive trusting all the way. That's the way it reads in the Message Bible. Listen to me carefully. Do not shrink back. Step forward in fearless confidence because Jesus has given it to you. You can't muster it up on your own. You don't have to find it yourself. You don't have to try to self-motivate. It's not going to work. Everything human is coming down. God is exposing to you there's nothing there. What will you decide when you get to the end of that which is human? I pray that you are stepping right now by a decision, right in the midst of all that atmospheric shrinking back. In that moment, you say, I step forward with my Father, and I will move freely about, no matter what happens. Not with the fantasy faith, that says, oh, I'm going to step forward and God won't let anything happen. My friends, have you read your Bible? Have you read what the sons of the living God endured to accomplish their assignment? We are here to finish our course. We are people who will finish. Come on, you're in the, you're in the real time right now development, all right? The next steps of maturing. Hmm? And I'm so glad that you are on with me here today. I'm Nancy McCready. Check everything out at nancymccready.com. All of that, but I'm telling you, this real-time engagement, the slow fire of really, really being discipled is being unleashed right now. Hmm? They're building a certain kind of person. I bet it's you. Love you all. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.